on the road to Mac Stock with Mike Schmitz. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is supported by Notion. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects at notion.com slash Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's that time of year again as we are working our way through the presenters that are going to be at MacStock Conference and Expo. This is the road to MacStock. We like to talk to these folks a little bit ahead of time to give you a taste of who they are and what kind of things they're going to be talking about. We specifically instruct them not to give their presentations here, that's not the point, but more to give you an idea about what their topic is and why they chose to uh, to talk about it. The theme this year is learn, and I can't think of anybody on the, uh, the roster that that would fall into uh, alignment with better than Mr. Mike Schmitz. Mike, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to chatting with you, Chuck, and looking forward to seeing you hopefully in person this year. It would be a nice change, yes. Um, I, I too am looking forward <laughs> to seeing everybody. Uh, you know, it's it's been just way too long, um, and I I love Mike's Mike's topic this year. Um, I know we're changing venues, uh, so I'm anxious to see how that works. I think you probably were there the last year to see the the venue where we're going to be going. Yes. So last year actually was still at the uh, the community college, oh, but the year before that there was the year before that there was a very small group that uh, was in person at the stage left, and so I was there and gave my presentation live there. And I I can't remember. I think maybe Dave Ginsburg did one live there too. But the majority of the presentations were were video, uh, and I don't envy Mike having to make that hybrid event work <laughs> like he did i think he did a pretty miraculous uh job pulling it off to be honest but uh it's a really cool little space and uh yeah i think it's going to be great when everybody is there together it'll be a, a lot of fun I, I heard nothing but good reviews of that particular session and that one was very restricted last year i i mean i'm sorry i kind of missed an extra year because i came down with covid or tested positive i should say um right before right before last year's max talk and so i had to miss it so i'm looking forward to seeing everybody again and now seeing stage left because i only saw it before on screen so we'll go from there I uh, picked up an extra presentation last year, I think, because you couldn't make it. I ended up giving two talks. <laughs> Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. I, I know Mike did because I felt I felt terrible about having to call and say, hey, yeah, guess what? Um, but, you know, it's at the end of the day, it was the right thing to do um, because I, I would have felt a whole lot worse if anybody had gotten sick and – there, there was, there'd have been no way to know that it was me, but just the fact that I would have been, been increasing the odds, that just was not acceptable. Right. So. No, I understand. I understand that. I hope people enjoyed it. I ended up uh, last year was create. I ended up giving two conceptual talks about creativity, uh, one on the concept of the creativity flywheel, another one just on a bunch of random creativity tips that I was putting together for a YouTube video at the time. Like, hey, Mike, what do you think about this? He's like, hey, yeah, that looks good. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> these these themes that he picks, by the way, are, are always a little tricky for me because I feel I see about a thousand different vectors into them. And uh, the ones that are always more appealing to me are not the very app-specific ones. But I feel like sometimes those are the ones that resonate the most with the people that go there. They want to know how to use a specific app to do a specific thing. Um, and I end up finding myself not doing that <laughs> All that often. So with this one's uh, this year, the theme being learn, um, I had a real hard time nailing this one down. <laughs> uh, you know, I think we all take whatever topic he has and sort of, like you said, find the vector that that suits us. Um, I but I also know what you mean. But I think there's a, a big benefit to having those not nuts and bolts sessions. I mean, I love the nuts and bolts sessions, but you know, there's also something to be said for getting things a little more conceptual, a little more motivational, a little more out of out of just the uh, you know, if you do this, then you can get that uh, on on screen, um, and but but kind of stretching our our 
are thinking about technology because we all have so much phenomenal technology at our commands right now. So, but, but so if you've had trouble nailing it down, what can you tell me about your session this year? <laughs> Well, I think I finally did nail it down. I sent it over to Mike and he approved it. Um, but to your point about we have all this phenomenal technology at our disposal, when you think about the topic of, of learn, my brain immediately goes to how do we leverage the technology that we have in order to learn more or learn better, learn more effectively? And what the heck does that even mean? Because there's so much... Uh, there's so much technology that we have that any piece of information that we might need for anything that we would want to do is literally at our, our fingertips. So learning is, for me, kind of going the opposite way and uh, putting up maybe some intentional roadblocks and boundaries around our focus so that we're not bombarded by all the information that's out there, but we intentionally engage with the stuff that we want to see. So in when I think about that approach to learning and really just intentional technology use, the thing that comes to mind for me is this whole concept of personal knowledge management or PKM, which admittedly is kind of popularized by apps like Obsidian, which I've talked about the, the last couple of years. But um, I don't. I think it goes far beyond a single app. It's more so your attitude or your perspective towards the technology that you're using and the things that you are allowing to come into your world or the things that you are consuming. Um, I, I guess that is really a big deal for me because for a long time, I actually thought that I was not creative and it was because I just consumed all these things I listened to all these podcasts, I watched all these YouTube videos, I went through all these courses, but because I had no output, uh, I felt like I saw what other people were doing, but there was no way that I could do that. And so that's kind of the approach I want to take is like personal knowledge management and choosing the apps that you're going to use in your own productivity and creativity workflows, because that's kind of what personal knowledge management is. Uh, in my opinion, you have these things that come in, and then you connect these dots right? That's what creativity is. It's a formula. You connect the dots and you express them in new and interesting ways. But there has to be that expression. And that's the thing I really want people to think about is how do I express the, the dots that I'm collecting? I read all these things. I watch all these things. I collect all these dots. But what does it mean to me? And then expressing that in some way, shape or form it doesn't have to be a podcast, doesn't have to be a blog post, it doesn't have to be public facing. But Thoughts disentangle themselves through lips and pencil tips, right? I would also add clicky keyboards. So even if it's just typing out, like, this is what I think about whatever topic, you know, I think there's a lot of value in that. And I think that can uh, influence the way that people go about, not just the way they live their lives, but specifically how they do their work, whether it is engineering, accounting, or full-time creator like me, you're making things on the internet. I think everyone has to figure out for them, themselves uh, what sort of uh, vehicles they use for the expression here, but there there should be an expression of this is what this means to me, and, and there should be some form of uh, creating, even if it's just uh, synthesizing, this is what I think about a topic and nobody ever sees it. I'm intrigued by the idea because I can think of some, some personal examples, both for myself and for some people around me that I know. The, the idea that you ha have all the inputs, but you don't have that, out, that, that outlet. I'm not even going to say output, but I'm going to say outlet for whatever urges you happen to have, uh, creative urges. Um, you know, be it, as you said, you know, gardening or writing or painting or something, you know, woodworking, uh, whatever it happens to be. Um, that That's an interesting idea that, that of, of striking that balance and almost feeling f from what you just said that, <clears throat> pardon me, that you need to have that out outlet for a healthy balance. Mm -hmm. That That is the, the learning loop is that you hear something, you see something, you engage with something, all right? So something comes into your your world, right? And then you reciprocate. It reminds me of uh, 
a classic book that I read a while ago, How to Read a Book by Mortimer Adler. He talks about how when you are reading a book, you are engaging in a discussion with the author. Most people don't view reading a book that way. They view it as a, a one-way information download. I am just receiving whatever this guru happens to say, right? But a more effective way of reading, especially when you read a lot, you get to what he calls the fourth level of reading, the syntopical reading, where you're lining up the ideas and the things that you're getting from whatever you're reading along all the other books that you've read, all the other ideas, those dots that you've collected. And there has to be, in Mortimer Adler's words, this like pitch and catch between the author and the, the reader, where you are trying to understand the author's arguments. So your response is typically just a rhetorical internal question, like, what are you actually trying to say, person who's writing this book and I, that I'm reading, right? And, but you're trying to understand their perspective, and then you decide for yourself, do I agree with that? Do I disagree with that? Why? Right? And if all you do is receive information, it creates this sense of overwhelm, at least for me, where I like, haven't really sorted through all these things. It's like, 10,000 messages in the email inbox and you know there's something in there that's important but you're just stressed out by the thought of even sitting down to sort through all that stuff uh, i went through a, a workshop by nick milo called linking your thinking where he, he called that a mental squeeze point you can feel it like uh, i feel unsure about whatever this thing is and that's the moment where you sit down and you decide for yourself what do you think about this stuff and the really cool thing is like you can ascribe your own meaning to whatever it is that you've you've collected. He he talks about the this concept of a map of content. I really like that because you you collect all this content, all these ideas, all these notes, right? And then what does it all mean? You get to decide. You think about the a uh, map, it's it's a a representation of reality. Whatever map you look at is not reality because it's a smaller version of this ginormous thing. If it was reality, it would be the same size as whatever area it's trying to depict. And for a lot of maps, travel maps, road maps, you know, it's, it's obvious what the important landmarks are, the things that should be included on that map, the major streets, major landmarks, right? But when you think about a map of your brain and the things that you've collected, uh, I want to encourage people to embrace the role of the cartographer and decide for yourself what is important enough to show up on this map. And that's a totally different perspective for a lot of people when it comes to notes and information, because it's always somebody else's information that I'm just hoarding. I'm putting in a filing cabinet somewhere and I never think about it again until I have to go search for it and then I can dig it up. But I want to flip that script a little bit and recognize that whenever you connect, collect one of these dots, it is influencing your future thinking. And that's okay. That's actually a good thing. And you should lean into that and decide what the meaning actually is for you. For you. And then the way that gets expressed, the designing your own workflow, you know, picking and choosing the apps that are going to contribute value to your workflows in specific ways and when you do that, you don't have to worry about the, the shiny new object syndrome, right? Oh, there's this new thing. There's this new app. I should plug this in because I heard somebody talk about it. You know, if you, you, you uh, decrease the FOMO when you know exactly what everything in your workflow is, is doing. So you, you, you're kind of known as Mr. Intentional. Um, you know, with, with things we've talked about here on the show before, your presentations, are you going to be trying to guide people to certain apps or are you going to be making recommendations in a, in a more general fashion about how <laughs> to how to pick an app that suits your style or your your desire for whatever it is you're going to get out of your personal knowledge management? Oh, great question. Um, I don't think I'm going to make any formal recommendations from this stage. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll share a couple. I'll probably talk about the ones that I use, uh, but I don't really want to say this is what you should use for this because that is very personal. But I do want people to think about what are the apps that they choose for what I am calling your PKM stack. Right, so you have a technology stack for like a web app. You know, you have all these different frameworks and these different things that do specific things 
in this workflow, they, they do a specific job, right? Um, I want to encourage people to think about the jobs that they are hiring their apps to do <laughs> and then lean into having those apps do those things and knowing exactly how all of those things connect because personal knowledge management, whether we realize it or not, this is maybe a new, uh, it's not really a new term. It's new to me in the last couple of years because I, it's kind of exploded in popularity with these do everything apps. But the concept of personal knowledge management, if you boil it down to the nuts and bolts, it's been around for a long time. Uh, there's all sorts of different kinds of personal knowledge that we manage, either intentionally or by default, right? We've got uh, all of the addresses and, and contacts and things in our, our phone. We've got all of our appointments in our calendar. We've got all of the things that we need to do in a task list or a to-do app, right? We have all the things that we want to read in a read-it-later app, but we never think about how and all those things connect and uh, how things move from one piece to another. And I think if, if you don't change anything about your workflow, but you understand how information moves between all of those different things that are already in your workflow, then that is a net win. Um, if you don't have any specific apps for specific roles, you know, we'll chat at the conference and I'll... <laughs> I'll tell you what I think, but uh, the big win is just figuring out how all this stuff fits together. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Notion. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects at notion.com slash macvoices. Project management is a necessary evil, but sometimes that's because you're jumping between tabs at best and different programs or services at worst. But now you don't have to any longer. Today, I'm excited to share that Notion has just launched Notion Projects, which includes new powerful ways to manage projects and leverage the power of their built-in AI features too. Notion Projects combines project management with your docs, knowledge base, and AI features too, so you can stop jumping between tools and stop paying too much for them too. Notion is super customizable as well. View projects in any way you like as a timeline, table, or Kanban board. There's also powerful filtering and automation features so you can work exactly the way you want. I've been using Notion's integrated AI to improve my project descriptions and communication. It really makes a difference when you're having trouble finding just the right words for a complex description. And if you don't like the first suggestion, just try it again. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects. You can try it for free today at notion.com slash macvoices. That's all lowercase letters. Notion.com slash Mac Voices. When you use my link, you're supporting my show. Go right now to Notion.com slash Mac Voices. Thanks to Notion for supporting Mac Voices. Boy, there's so, I mean, there's so many ways I want to go here, and I don't want to ask you to do the presentation here. But yeah, I I've can appreciate the frustration with some of the do everything apps because it just feels like so many of them don't do any of it well. You know, they, 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 yes, they have, let's to take your examples. You know, yes, there's a to do list. Yes, there's a calendar. Yes, maybe there's an, uh, a, an email client, but none of them are really good. And so the, the idea of a stack of acquiring things that for me do what I need to do or want to do and picking the best apps for that and not being pressured into, well, I just need to jump into this entire single ecosystem, and I'm intentionally not going to name any so I don't offend anybody. But, <laughs> you know, because, listen, they if, if that works for you, then that's great. But I may not need a professional contact management app um, or, yep. you know, a... a um, well, I'm thinking specifically of Salesforce as, as part of this discussion. You know, that's an incredibly complex, powerful client or su prospect suspect management application, but it may just be completely overkill for what I need. Mm -hmm. Well, so the do everything apps, actually, uh, the, the, uh, thought behind the do everything apps is, is, is good. Um, but I think by trying to be a do everything app, they actually make it worse. Uh, reminded of the quote by Albert Einstein that everything should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. And so 
the do everything apps, I feel like a lot of times they are trying to make things too simple because you only have one place to put things. And I think that's a, a mistake a lot of times. Uh, but on the other side of that, there are the Salesforce types type apps and where you don't need all of that complexity. And I would argue for a lot of people, they don't even need a lot of the uh, the complexity that is baked into just about every calendar and task management app. You know, we need a simple list of the places that we're supposed to be, times we're supposed to be there, and a list of things that we want to get done. Um, just using task managers as an example, because I have a lot of experience with those. The problem that people experience when whenever they commit to whatever task management app they're going to use is they dump thousands of tasks in there, like the brain dump, because David Allen told them to. And then they go in there and they see all those thousands of tasks. They get overwhelmed. They don't do anything. But they've all got arbitrary due dates on them so that when they go back two weeks later, now everything is red because it's overdue and it's screaming at them. So they walk away from it and they just try to do it all out of their head, right? You'd be better off just making a list every morning of five things that you're going <laughs> to do today. So it's finding that balance. How do you feel about mixing some of the, uh, s- some of the apps um, and and again, it's tough to to have this discussion without naming some specifics. But the task management system is a, is a great example of what because I found that that has happened to me. And one of the things I do every night before bed is I've got a tablet beside my bed and I scribble out. I mean, part of it is sort of the GTD thing of getting it out of your brain and, and down on paper. But more importantly, just okay, these are the things that are most on my mind. So therefore, those are the things I need to get off my mind first thing tomorrow morning. And it's surprising how productive you can be by accomplishing those things and, and what a relief it can be that, okay, I, you know, I've, I've got all my other things archived out somewhere, but these are the ones that are most important. It, it feels like a, a variation on the Eisenhower diagram that we've talked about before. Yeah, so the topic is learn not productivity. I'll try not to go too far down this rabbit hole. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I agree with you. Um, my version of this now, I have actually an e-ink Android tablet called an Onyx Books. Uh, and I, I, it has a, a stylus like an Apple Pencil, but it's e-ink, and it is very locked down in terms of what is on there. Um, it's basically... My Obsidian, which is what I use for digital journaling at the end of the day. It's a Readwise Reader, so I can read at the end of the day, but it's always articles and things that I've collected. Uh, there is no web browser. There is no social media. There's nothing really fun on there. But it does have also uh, a note-taking, uh, a, a, a stock note-taking app, but it allows you to do uh, PDF templates. So I have a PDF template that I fill out every day. And I do that the, the, usually the night before, and I'll put on there, I'll time block my whole day for tomorrow, and I'll put on the up to five tasks that I'm going to try to to do tomorrow. And then I actually have that open next to me most of the day, and I work off of that, that short list. Um, but every hour has a job, essentially. And uh, that's the other thing is like, you need to not just identify the things that you want to do, but also the time that you're going to be doing them in and so every hour has a job and even if it doesn't if i don't go exactly according to that plan i've already set the intention so my brain is free to let it go and i can focus on whatever i happen to be doing at the time it doesn't feel like i I constantly have to be scanning my calendar or the horizon you know the the inboxes slack email whatever because oh i might have forgotten about something important know so there's like that low level stress that's just kind of always there for me that exists until i write it down and then literally the minute that i write it down i can let it go Hmm. makes sense makes sense it it, i mean everybody's got a solution out there and everybody's got a product they want to try to sell you and I think one of the big things, and it sounds like that's sort of going to be what you're addressing, is you're going to give us permission to say, you know, that doesn't suit me. Or, it, you know, it, it, it may suit somebody else, but it's it's not what I need. I need either something more complex or something a lot more simple. And there's there's no right or wrong answer there. 
Yeah, so I guess if you were to break this down into steps and, and how this all pertains to learning. So the title that I propose is PKM 101, Making Sense of It All, because there's all this information out there, and that's really what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sense of, of everything. What's important? Why is it important? How does it help me? Right. So what I want to help people do is, first of all, think through the systems that they already have in, in place and figure out how information comes into their world and then what they actually do with that. I've got a diagram uh, on one of my slides that I put together one time when I was stressed out about this. And I just opened up good notes and I started doodling and just creating this like big workflow diagram of where things come from and where things go. And it took me quite a while to do it. But after I did it, I felt a lot more confident in uh, the systems that I had put together. And by identifying all the different inboxes and the sources of information, I was able to say, okay, I'm going to ignore this one now for several hours. It was like the minute that I got it out in front of me, I, I got rid of that, that stress that I was talking about because I could recognize like this is actually what's all there. But until you actually think it through and put it all down on paper, it's kind of like, where's the next thing coming from? Right? So then once you identify that workflow, now you're going to get more signal and less noise. So that's step one, right? And then once we have more signal, less noise, how do we extract more value from those things? And primarily that's through notes and ideas, deciding what does this mean to me personally. And hopefully by the end of the session, everyone has uh, had a little bit of time to think about this and they feel good about identifying the apps that they're choosing for their own PKM stack. I'm really looking forward to this. I I think we're all, I, I know I'm guilty of it. You know, I'm constantly reassessing the productivity systems I have, the workflow systems I have to figure out, does this make sense? Um, can I do something a little bit better, a little easier, a little more comprehensively? And it sounds like that is at least part of what you're going to attack or make me think about in maybe a way that I haven't thought about before. And that's, that's usually a result of, of our conversations, is you make me think about something that in a, in a way that I haven't exactly <laughs> thought about before. So, yeah, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Well, that is learning, right? That, that, that It's thinking about things uh, in a way you haven't before. And I would even um, challenge people because uh, we tend to, as humans, and I fall into this too, I try to fight against this, but we surround ourselves with people who agree with us and we build this bubble of belief it's called where people are saying the same things in this echo chamber and we have built the justification for this bubble of belief on all of our experiences all of the knowledge that we have collected Right, we are all of our learning up until this point, but we have to recognize that whatever perspective we bring to the information that we've collected is one tiny little sliver of what is actually knowable. And when you recognize that, then you, in an effort to actually learn more and learn better, you look for some of those contradictory opinions. You look for people who are saying things different ways. You're looking for new ways of of doing things instead of just reinforcing what you're already doing so you can pat yourself on the back and say good job i must have got this gotten this figured out because everybody i know is doing it the same way you know you're, you're constantly asking what do i not know and when you encounter some new ideas uh the flipping the script there like real learning is being willing to say i was wrong right but then you're not threatened by that because whatever you were believing and saying at certain point this is hard for me as a creator by the way because there's always a record of the stuff that you make there's the podcast episodes there's the blog posts there's the videos and someone can always point back and like oh you wrote this six months ago you know and now you're telling me something different and yeah that's the way i used to think that was true at that moment in time but that is a previous version of mike schmitz and the current mike schmitz doesn't think that way anymore <laughs> constantly being uh being willing to to change and and grow evolve you know, whatever term you want to use there, but you got to be able to, you got to be willing to change your mind about things. 
that might be one of the most profound things you've said during this discussion. I've had that experience with with some Mac Voices episodes in the distant past where people, you know, call me out on something. And it's like, yeah, you know, you're right. That's that's the way it was then. But at any given moment, things change. And I, I, I think that's one of the struggles that we're having now in the political systems, in the educational systems, in just about every system you can name, that uh, people, you know, don't they're afraid of change, they fight change, they resist change, or they stick their head in the stand and just hope it goes away. And uh, that's just, <laughs> that's not going to, that's not going to happen. And so embrace it, enjoy it, you know, because with every change, there's a new opportunity. There, yeah, there probably yep. is some detriment, but there's a new opportunity. So I don't and the know. truth I, is we're always, we're always changing, whether you realize it or, or not, you're not the same person you were even at like a cellular level, like your cells are constantly dying, reproducing. Are you familiar with the, uh, the legend of Theseus's ship? Not, no. So it's from Greek mythology, but Theseus is the, the guy who slew the Minotaur, right? So they put his ship in a museum when he came back and slowly over time, piece by piece, it wore away. So they would replace a board here and nail there after a while all the pieces of Theseus's ship have been replaced. Is it still Theseus's ship? Right? Because every single piece of it is different, but the essence of the thing is still the same. That's really the approach we should take as, as humans, I feel. And uh, that's kind of what I want to encourage people to, to that mindset. You know, I want to encourage them to embrace with this, this whole topic of, of learn. Maybe I'm going way too deep on this. Maybe I'm being way too literal on what I like learn. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe people just want to know, you know, a few tips and tricks on whatever app. But um, this is where this is where my brain goes. And I I kind of want to end it right there with with Theseus' ship because I think that's a great great example. Um, I, and I like the idea is that same ship, no, but the essence is still there. So I I think you've got to if you're a thinking person, if you care about any of this, if you don't care, then it doesn't make any difference. But if you care, and obviously I think a Mac Voices audience does, I definitely think a Mac stock audience will, um, that you know you need to have your mind open just a little bit. Because if not, then you're not growing. And that's a shame. Well, I mean, think back to like the original, uh, the, the original Mac ads. They, they were think different, right? We got to think different. And it's easy to get comfortable once we've thought different for a little bit and plant our flag and say, okay, this is now where my thinking resides. But uh, we constantly got to be asking, is this still right? You know, something may have been right a while ago and more information comes into our, our uh, awareness and it changes our thinking about things. But also, I mean, even just take out the, the universal right versus wrong, but is this right for me? There are things that were right for me a couple of years ago <laughs> that are no longer right for me. I mean, we were talking before we hit record about job changes, right? So that's, there's lots of examples of that if, you, uh, if you're aware of them. That's the thing I want to get people to, to recognize is just open up their awareness about the fact that we're always uh, changing in fact, uh, going back to like this, the cellular thing, uh, I heard that on average, cells live seven years. Now, obviously, different systems and things like that, it's going to be a little different. But the general idea is that just like Theseus' ship, every single piece is different. Eventually, every single cell in your body is going to be different. Are you still the same person? You probably think you are. Right. And you are from a certain perspective, but you do, you can't discount the fact that you, your body is constantly changing. So let your mind change as well. Folks, this is going to be a lot of fun. It's every, every presenter we've talked to so far, I'm anxious to hear. And Mike is just one more because again, I, I do enjoy contemplating these kind of things and thinking about them. And if you think we've gone a little too deep, that's okay. You can, you know, you can take a break during my session, but I don't think you want to do that. I, you know, I think that you really need to hear some of this stuff and think about it. And if it doesn't apply to you or if, if you're satisfied with your productivity stack, 
then great. Or no, a PKM stack, excuse me, PKM stack. Um, great, but I've, I, I guess, Mike, maybe it's just our nature that we're just never satisfied. I don't know. <laughs> well, you mentioned the intentionality thing. That's kind of like my never ending quest. I have this concept um, that I choose to apply to myself that I am in permanent beta, right? Things are, are always changing. But I think this is the eternal struggle for everybody with their technology is how do I use this, use this intentionally to accomplish what I consider to be the good outcome of this engagement and not just become another cog in the machine feeding the algorithms, right? I don't want to just be sucked into the, the endless feeds. Technology is great, but great power comes great responsibility if you want to uh, use it in an intentional way. Agreed. So folks, Max.Conference and Expo is going to be held at the end of July in um, in Woodstock, Illinois. Visit Max.ConferenceAndExpo.com to sign up. You'll get to hear Mike speak. You'll get to hear everyone else that you've seen so far on the road to Maxdoc, and there's more coming. Um, we're going to have a great time. We're going to we're going to learn. Sorry, <laughs> that's just the way it is. <laughs> we're going to learn, but we're going to enjoy a lot of each other, a lot of great discussions, and a lot of fellowship. And so we want you there. Please, maxstockconferenceandexpo.com, um, and sign up, and we'll see you in Woodstock. Mike, before we go, I want to ask you to let folks know where maybe in preparation for your session they can go and see what you're up to now. Um, what are the best ways to connect with what your uh, what your activities are? Uh, well, as we were talking about before, I'm in the middle of a job change. So the things are going to be changing. I guess uh, f right now, I would say MikeSchmitz.com and uh, another website which has links to all of the other stuff, the creative stuff, is uh, FaithBasedProductivity.com. I am still on Twitter at underscore Mike Schmitz, and that is the only social media platform I am at currently. So if you want to get my attention that's where to do it great mike thanks so much um this has always been a, it's, it's a great discussion as always i'm really looking forward to hearing your session and then continuing it more in person uh, we will see see how much better we can make each other <laughs> sounds good looking forward to it Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We're on the road to MacStock. Again, MacStockConferenceNexpo.com. We want you there with us. So please check it out and join us. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com.